Hey guys, King Gath here, and in this guide, we're going to go over the control score and the hostile takeover system. So when Conqueror first launched, we had a little bit of a problem. You could effectively take a little army of five guys, and as long as you were very careful about it, you could take over the entire map, and there was nothing you, from discouraging you from doing so. You didn't have to keep anybody stationed at any of your outposts, because you could never lose them. And that was changed with Phase 2 by introducing the Hostile Takeover System. So the Hostile Takeover System basically is a way to discourage you from growing too fast, and so that you actually have to have some influence over the territories you take control of. And that's where the control score comes in. The control score represents a combination of how juicy a target is your particular outpost or vassal versus how much influence you have over it from the perspective of army presence. So the idea there with the control score is as it, when it's lower, it means that your target, your settlement, your outpost, etc., is generating more resources than enemy factions believe you have the ability to control to prevent them from taking. So, if your control score is low, you will encourage more attacks, which can lead to hostile takeover. So, we'll talk about more in depth on the hostile takeover system in a moment. But with the control, basically, in order to bump that score up, you you need to continue to add more soldiers within range of your producers. So, if you have haven't watched the soldier needs video i highly recommend it because it'll talk about the, the the way that wages rations and equipment are generated they come from plots and so the more of those plots you have in any particular settlement the more likely that place is to be attacked unless you have enough of the appropriate soldier roles and this is another video you're probably going to want to have watched the soldier roles video or understand that system before you go any further in this one so there are three primary ways you can generate control over a settlement, and those are the three different roles. There are the warrior, the guard, and the patrol. Now, warriors can only be stationed at outposts, so automatically they cannot provide direct control to a vassal. And vassals, are, you're going to find, are the ones that are in most need of the control score because they will generate a lot more resources naturally. They just tend to generate more because they have benefits to do so. The whole system is designed around vassals producing most of your resources and outposts being the provider of homes for your soldiers. So you're going to find very quickly that your outposts, or sorry, your vassals are the most common targets for hostile takeover. So warriors obviously cannot directly influence that. So instead, to allow them to influence it, you set up patrols. So for example, if we set up a patrol route from, from our, one of our nearby outposts, in this case, Red Rocket, where we have most of our guys right now, if we set up a patrol from here to Abernathy, a percentage of the soldier or the warrior count would, would directly benefit this settlement as as control score now i'm not going into specific numbers i'm just talking about things in abstracts and relative to each other mostly because those numbers will likely change frequently so i want to point you guys to our wiki where we document the latest numbers and you'll be able to see all of that i will put a link below so if you're curious about the actual numbers in the system you can check those out there but i think most of you aren't going to want to have to do math so you're probably going to want to just look at that number down at the bottom there or rather look at that meter and make sure it's full and that's all you have to do now obviously when you're setting up remote things like patrols that's a little harder because that control score is only showing the outpost you're standing in and so for that you'll want to go to the empire menu on your war planners desk which i will cover in a future video but i think you'll be able to figure it out you can actually run a report to see the control score versus the control need uh, because like i said the control need is directly tied to the amount of resources that you are producing so the more wages rations and equipment you're producing the more control score you need so if you want to see the numbers and you want to make sure that it's perfect without having to visit each settlement you can check out the reports on the war planners desk by clicking on the little map there so patrols are a way for you to provide control to a particular place so setting up patrol routes between your outposts and your nearby vassals is a great idea especially those outposts that have a lot of soldier or a lot of warrior class in them warrior role excuse me so that's one way that you can build up your control score. Another way, and this is one I would recommend no matter what, even if you have a high a number of patrols set up, 
what I would do would be add guards to all of your vassals. So guards provide two benefits, and this is where we're going to talk a little bit more about the hostile takeover system. So guards, in addition to creating a large boost to control score and actually being able to live inside of the vassals, they will act as defenders against any invading forces attempting to take over a place hostily. So the way the hostile takeover system works is that Every day after you hit a certain time period, there's a chance that one or more, depending on how large your empire is, and uh, when I say one or more, it's it's pretty well capped. I think right now the most that can ever happen simultaneously are three, which would then force you to make decisions because it's unlikely you'd be able to visit all three of them even with fast travel due to the way the time system works in the game. Uh, but we kept it to a minimum for now. That There's Jeff definitely... It's definitely likely we'll add options to make it more chaotic in the future, but for now, it will be very rare you ever get more than one of your outposts or vassals attacked simultaneously. If you're playing through Jammer's Questline, two can happen frequently because part of the intensity comes from where you are in Jammer's Questline. There's a lot of the attacks are tied to the where you are in the quest, so that can change things. But for the most part, most of you guys who are playing Conqueror will find that you'll rarely ever see more than one attack happen at once. And the the chance of a attack happening directly corresponds to how well controlled your territory is so if you've got a lot of places that are poorly controlled you're more likely to encourage an attack and the attacks will generally happen at the least the place with the least control score with being that that is the place that has uh, the largest number of resources versus compared to the amount of control you have so that's the 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 tastiest target if uh, jammer were speaking here uh, basically this is the target that most other factions think would be most worth their time to take and that's what they're going to try and attack so with the hostile takeover system once that attack occurs if you have guards or warriors at that particular location and like i mentioned vassals cannot have anything but guards they cannot have warriors at them if there are none of those type the place is automatically surrendered to that attacking force so just by that nature alone, you're going to want to have guards there. Now, once you show up to combat, you can influence the combat and determine whether or not the guards will actually die because you can actually get involved and help them survive and what have you. But the just off camera, if a attack occurs and you choose not to go back, like if there are no guards, you lose it instantly. You don't even get a chance to go back. It's just you'll just lose it. So you'll just get a message in the corner that says that your territory was hostily taken over. So your guards kind of are what allow you to get that notification and attempt to go back and help them so at bare minimum you're going to want to make sure you always have a guard stationed at every one of your vassals it's a good idea to have one at every one of your outposts as well when you're running assaults just to make sure that you don't accidentally leave a place one of your own outposts undefended while you run an assault so guards are very important for that they add a ton to control score and they prevent outright hostile takeovers from happening off camera now when you show up at a particular attack so let's say you do have guards so let's say we had a guard stationed at abernathy farm and an attack occurred i would get a notice that abernathy farm was under assault it would actually show up as its own quest and i could come back and help defend now if all of my guards die during that combat i will lose control of it they will become hostily taken over and so just having a single guard is just one piece of the puzzle but you're often going to want more than that and though the best way to do that is to let the default systems take over so by default when you assault a vassal and take it over any martial plots or the vanilla and i'm trying to remember what they're called guard posts i believe so if we go in here under oops defense yeah the guard posts any of those will automatically be manned by some of your soldiers at the end of your assault assuming that some of your soldiers survived so when you make an assault let's say you come see if i came in here with 15 guys and this place had three martial plots most of my warriors survived three of them would move into those three martial plots so now those are automatically going to be made guards and they're going to defend this place and help me defend if i show up to prevent a hostile takeover <clears throat> but if that's not enough for you you can also send more now i covered this in the manage roles but i will show you real quick on my i'm going to convert my personal guard here so i have a personal guard here we haven't talked about that yet in this playlist but we will um, but i want to remove him from my squad so he becomes a normal soldier and then i can change his role make him a guard and send him to Abernathy. So you don't have to have martial plots for them to operate. You don't have to have guard posts. In fact, for the most part, on the default settings, you won't even be able to come into build mode in your vassals if you want to. I often find myself wanting to just to add additional defenses, so like adding more turrets or uh, what have you. As I, You will want to turn on this system here. It's called uh, vassal control. So if we go under the Conqueror Empire Management 
and uh, we go control vassal settlement. So this is off by default. And basically what that means is you don't have to worry about the vassal's happiness or anything like that. You can just let it do what it wants. They will, if you've got a city plan there, it will continue to operate as normal. But if you want to have control over the vassals so that you can build in them, but then you're also responsible for their happiness, you can turn this on. So it's useful if you want to, uh, if you want to get your hands dirty. If you don't want to, you don't have to. So I know a lot of players love the, the sim settlement system for the completely hands-off factor they don't want to build you don't have to um, but you can always send guards to your outposts or, and vassals even if you don't have martial plots or guard posts for them to work um, don't mind his ai wandering him off to red rocket this is just uh the wonders of the bethesda ai he's first finishing a command from after i dismissed him as a uh, personal guard and then he'll come back here after he recognizes his mistake so you can assign more guards to a place even if there's not enough places for them to work or if there are no places from them to, for them to work so you can you can focus on it purely from the control score factor and from the fact that you want to think about how a an attack will play out so if uh if you anticipate that the attacks are too large for you to take on with just a couple of your local guards you might want to send more another thing and we haven't talked about this yet we'll get to that in the soldier ranks video but there is a a rank at rank five where your soldiers become immortal and so generally i think most players tend to use those for their attack squad but there's a huge benefit from making them guards you kind of think of them as like old hands that are retiring as that then make comes any place that they're stationed at can no longer be hostily taken over because they can't be those soldiers can't be killed they'll just go into the injured position giving you the time you need to defend so having lots and lots of top rank soldiers is actually very valuable even from a defensive standpoint so I think that covers the bulk of it. Uh, the different the different roles, warrior, guard, and patrol, each have different benefits and different points that they add to the control score. If you're interested in the math behind that, again, you can check out the wiki, which I'll, again, try and remember to link below. I'm making a lot of these videos at once, so could slip through the cracks. Feel free to comment below if I've forgotten that, and I'll make sure to add that in. And if Or if you have found, the, found that on a wiki yourself, go ahead and post a link there for others to find. But uh, the, in addition to them each providing resources, the the other big thing to know is that the the amount of control required will change over time based on the number of commercial, agricultural, and industrial plots that exist in that particular settlement and the levels they are. So even if you started out with a, a control, a full control score, over time, you might need to add additional support from your faction in order to maintain control as the settlement becomes more established so if you took over a level one settlement and still have that city plan set up to upgrade and it gets to level two or level three you're suddenly the amount of of support you gave it through warriors guards and patrols might not be enough and that's intentional we want this to be an ever-evolving system so that you constantly have fun things to do throughout all of your empire so the takeover system is uh, to keep you honest and the control score is to help you know when you've done enough but even beyond the control score of just filling that up if you want to go beyond that there's no there's there is a there's a slight there's a system in place to prevent you from just spamming like crazy and that's the morale system which we'll cover in its own video because even though we want you to have this freedom and have these gameplay mechanics to play around with we want to keep some believability some role-playing room uh, and some more interesting dynamics to make those decisions interesting so check out the morale video to get the final piece of the puzzle so that you fully understand how the different rules work within conqueror